Good evening. I'm sorry. I got a momentum. I got a stroke going here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to tempt anybody to start eating ice cream. If you're not eating ice cream, don't go start eating because Miss Lorraine is eating it. My dog and my husband should be down anytime. Where's my dog? There he is. Anyway, here's my second fork full. Here we go. <laughs> Here he is, coming right on camera. I can't stay away from you, sweetie. I can't stay away from you. Right. You know, I, I miss you. He's got something he's got to get in the other room. It's my ice cream. Uh-uh, not in my ice cream. You ate yours, didn't give me nothing. You're dairy free. My dairy free. Well, why'd you give me? It's free. The dairy was free. <laughs> Never. Hey, Matthew. Plug me up. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. It's not me. It's always about the food. That's <laughs> my energy. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know what it could be giving me in the refrigerator. Huh? I get dinner. I dessert. You back down here again. Or water. Let's make sure that you are doing well. Right. Not really good to eat on you know, screen. Why not? Not Who says that? I make my rules. Here we go. I'm finishing that bad boy up tonight. No, that means he wants to get an eat, eat some. <laughs> All right. 43 years of marriage. I got him down. He don't know it. <laughs> I got it down. Welcome everybody to Nightcap at Nine. I'm Lorraine Lamar. Your host. Let's begin. Woo! Let's go. Give me, I'm going to give you the background, like I always do. Who I am, what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. And then I'm going to boom. Be tap, 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 tap. When you hear that tap, 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 you know I'm tapping because I'm tagging people to come on. And Matthew, you and I are going to figure out along with some other social media savvy people, how to set this up and put them all in groups. Because uh, this is so good. Uh, they'll tell me, I can only tag so many people. And then they say, you meet your limit and your number. Well, so if I tag and you tag your groups and I, boom, we got it down. Is that, hey, is that the refrigerator open? Uh -oh. Yeah, see, this is what I'm saying. Uh -oh. Any moment my dog will be next. Uh -oh. They don't even move until I get on here. Is it true? He'll be watching. Look, he's already looking at the dog. He'll be next. They just want, you know, yeah. five oh, minutes of fame, you know. So let's go on. I'll start tagging people. Here we go. Ready and go. So my name is Lorraine Lamont. And um, this is the nightcap at nine and how this whole, whole thing got started. Of course, it came about years ago when Miss Lorraine was doing this, um, you know, with so much strife and stuff going on in the community, in the world, yeah, especially in the United States, and the whole voting integrity and blah, blah, blah. I thought it would be nice if I could pull together and just start doing, maybe not together, just start talking on Facebook about the issues and see if we can get different people from opposing sides to come together and just please have the conversation, at least talk it out. It got a little heated, but nonetheless, I will tell you that it was okay. People weren't mean and hateful, trying to cancel your culture and your cat, your rat, your dog and everything. It, it, they weren't that, so it, it was okay. And then I did it and ended up with a huge little following there. Marketing-wise, I should have rolled with it, but I had other things to do. So then I finally, I just whittled it down and I stopped. I whittled it down as far as time is concerned. And I just once a week and then once a month and then boom, I stopped. 
And so then I just, so then of course, here comes all of the division and crazies again. This is where we are, absolutely. And Miss Lorraine decided to do it again. So in doing it again, I started it on my husband's birthday. Now, how do I know I started on his birthday? I know I started on his birthday simply because it's the day after Christmas. I feel so sorry for anybody's birthday that is the day after Christmas. God help you. God help you. No one remembers you. You're just, you're just, you know, what is it, dust in the wind or whatever they say? You know, you're not. No one can remember that you are a very, imp you know, you have a birthday. They just kind of lump you all in with everything else. I know I've done it myself to others, plus my husband. So I, the way I do with him is I do special things on his day so that I won't forget. When his day comes, I'll be doing the special thing. And it'll be like I'm doing really his birthday, but it's a special thing all included in the Christmas time. That's just kind of the way that it is. So let's just get started in a minute. I'm tagging. I'm going to stop here in a little bit, and then I'm going to come up, and then we're going to go from there. Let's see some friends I need to do. I know for sure, which is Penny. Oh, yes. That's my girl. She loves to come on. And then I have, of course, then I have my Ed Doyle. Yes, Ed. You want to come on? I'll bring you on as well. Okay. And then we'll just... Uh, Let's see. Oh, we'll go Ken, and then we're done from here. Boom, 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 boom. Okay, let's rock and roll. Whoever comes on or whatever, whatever, I'm just going to keep on talking. It's Monday. Yeah, it's Monday. And absolutely, for me, it's been a really productive Monday. It has. Because I got a chance to make the final move. Mm. to my office excuse me and um so worth it oh lord three years are close to somewhere in there I've been in another location for my nonprofit, and let's just say it has not been a merry-go-round. Well, maybe it is. <laughs> I'm grateful for being there, but it was just getting to the point where I really needed to find a place, and it, and it worked out really well. Can you believe we have an office suite? <laughs> I feel real special about that. Anyway, but I have on my nightcap at nine, my nonprofit, boom, my radio and nightcap at night, boom. Never the twain shall meet. I keep them separately all the time. Nothing crosses. Just wanted to tell you about my day. Busy day, but got it done. So let's begin. So when I started the nightcap, at, when I did it years ago, it was not called nightcap at nine. And it was not, let me make sure I did that. This is really something how this Facebook really gets me going. Hmm. It should be open for anyone to uh, kind of watch. But every now and then, every now and then I get something like, oh, oh, uh, oh, uh, I hear you, can't see you. Are you on? Hmm. Listen, I'm an equal opportunity hater, so it shouldn't be a problem. I'm an equal opportunity hater. I talk about the Democrats, the gays, the strays, the Republicans, the in-between, LGBTQTFG, everybody. Got it? Everybody. So they shouldn't be like shadow banning me, whatever. What happened to Wesley? I'm really concerned about my friend Wesley. He was my original social media, what I call manager. I don't know what's going on. They're not even letting me get anybody else on. You see how that is? Man, I tell you. I tell you. Look at there. Look at there. Nope. Nobody else can come on. That's how they're. I guess that's all you can invite, Lorraine. This is what I want. Guys, if you've been watching, this is what I want. I'm not this, but here we go. Ghetto. If you've been watching, 
me at nightcap at nine, and it seems to be something you you like, and you have friends you think that might be interested, would you please tag them too? Because it appears right now, they're only going to let me tag so many. And then boop, cut off, done, no more. But you can invite people. Yeah, you can. Please, please do that. And you see, Matthew has already put my links there. Hill Country Patriot, my radio, my website, LorraineLamont.net, yeah. My YouTube channel, yeah, yeah. And then you got this, Nightcap at Nine. So would you do Miss Lorraine a little bit of favor, okay? Maybe take a little bravery here. You tag people that you know would be interested, Okay. That I would really, really appreciate that. Let's, 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 let's go to the Father in prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. Oh, what a wonderful day. I thank you, God, for the opportunity. I get to do this. I don't have to do this. I thank you that you allow me to do it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. As I said, normally I'm on the radio. I go in, I pull in, and, and, and I, I make these scratchy notes in the, in the, parking lot. That's what they look like. Yep. That's what they look like. Hey, Nadine. Yay. Yay. And then I just fill in stuff. That's it. Then I go on the radio. And that's it. Then I bring those same notes home in this little cheap dollar store composition notebook. And then Instead of screaming and yelling like I'm on the radio, shut up, Mabel. No one cares about your brisket. Shut up, we lose it. But going 90 miles an hour, I come tonight and I talk about it in this manner. Mm -hmm. A little more slow. I get up a set. I can't tell you I'm not going to go off. Ma oh, Matthew can tell you that. A lot can tell you that. And two things make me go off. Number one, race and my kids. Mainly kids. All of them are my kids. Bad, the good, the black, the pink, polka dot, striped yellow, and in between white. Yeah. So when you talk about kids and whole thing with education, I kind of lose it a little bit there. All right. So um, my topics today, as, as I've already prayed, let me get some caveats. There's three. It's very important. Number one. Number one. Never call me an African American. I'm a, I'm a, yeah, I'm an American. I'm a human being. I'm a woman. I'm a, I'm a woman of color. Yep, I'm black. You're right. But never call me an African American. I'm an American. First American. First human being. First a Christian. Wife. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And as far as that little hyphen, African American. Don't do it to Miss Lorraine. It is an insult. I'd rather for you almost call me the N word. Don't get mad and upset, black people. I'm just telling you the way I feel. No. We don't want from the N-word to the Negro to the color to the African American to the uh, to Black America. I, 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 I'm done. I, I, I'm done. No pun intended to you, Nadine, with your last name being Black. <laughs> you know, no. Yeah, you know, I'm just. I'm done with that. Okay, so I am an American. Been in 17 countries, got a, you know, married to the same man, 43 years, 16 grand, five grown, been to 17 different countries, as I said, you know, got my master's degree in education, bachelor's in, soci in, in sociology, yeah, all of that, all of that, run my own company for 20 years, still have my nonprofit going, right, I'm just giving you those accolades, not to brag, brag, brag. But to let you know, I've been to a place raised in the inner city of Detroit, lost all my sisters and brothers to drugs. There's five of us. I'm the only one alive. Is that too fast for you? Let me slow it down. That's kind of how I go on the radio even faster. Yeah, I do. Because I have about 18 minutes. Mm -hmm. 30 minutes show up, about 18 minutes. Get the commercials in there. Get the halftime. Boom. I've got to boom, boom, boom. So, um... My caveats, I give these three. Number one, of course, the whole African-American thing. I'm not. I'm an American. Uh, the other thing is is, is Christians, uh, religious. I hate religion. I'm not hate. I don't. I, I hate being deemed as a religious person. I'm not a religious person. I hate religion, not religious people. I hate religion. I love the relationship that I have with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a Christian. I'm of the Christian faith. Yes, I do all of it. I've been a Baptist. I go to, I'm a ba I go to Baptist church. I'm not a Baptist. I go to a Baptist church. Yes, I do. Attend there. I've been you know, from everything to Protestant, Pentecostal, speaking tongues more than you all. Yes, I do prophesy, preach. Yes, got it down. Okay. 
So with all of that in mind, that's my that's my second caveat, caveat that we really have enough. Then the big one is that number one, I've been a Democrat for twenty some years or over. Then I was a Republican for twenty some years or over. Now I'm a conservative. Okay, so and working into twenty many years with that. So I, I, I believe there's crooks on both sides. I'm coming after both sides all the time. Gotcha. So that was my main three. And then here's my philosophy that I live by, breathe by. That God who sits high, looks low, sees every day coming. Absolutely nothing catches him by surprise. As a matter of fact, he's omnipresent, which means he's at the end, which means he's at the end and the beginning of history at the same time. He's already on tomorrow past that and you just barely working it out, right? So therefore he saw you swimming in your father's loins and your mother's blood and drowning and picked you for this time out of the history. He said, booyah, this is what I want you to live. Not only did he want you to live during this time, he gave you and packaged you with stuff that you will need to deal with the issues of your time. Gifts, talents, desires, everything. So he, that's my premises. So now with that, let's begin. So today's topic, very interesting Okay, I think they're going to let me tag some more people. They literally stopped me from tagging people. So let's see. Oh, nope. They're not letting me do it. See how that... Okay. Okay. Okay, here goes. Let's see. All right. They might let me do that. Okay. Let's see what happens here. So uh, <clears throat> today, I'm, you know, I do my funny and my furious. That's how I open up. Then I go into a little prayer, stuff like that. And then after going... Oops. Oops, 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 oops. Here I go. Might be cutting me off. Don't cut me off. Okay. Oh, yeah. See you, Matthew. They're trying to cut me off. I'll stop. So today on the show, I uh, have to do my prayer. I had this... <laughs> I do a little funny, you know, of course, we talked about already, Joe Biden is not sure how many grandkids he's got, you know, the whole thing. There's been a poll done, even in his own state of Pennsylvania, which was amazing and uh, and not shocking at the same time. You know, interviewing uh, black, white, pink, polka dot, in between age range, everything. What do you think about Joe Biden running again? Nobody said anything bad, but nobody said anything good. They basically, oh, well, I think that he needs to take a rest. Oh, well, I think that he needs, oh, man, people can really, I tell you. I tell you, if they had asked them same people, what do you think about DeSantis or Trump? Man, they'd have been so, hell no, not, you know. <laughs> But, um, well, I think we need someone younger. Uh, I think he needs to take a rest. One girl between the ages of, what, 21, 27 or so. They asked, well, what do you think what he's done good? She went, um, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> baby, don't lie. You ain't got to try to strum it up. We know you can't think of nothing. Finally, she says, well, he's not Trump. Damn, was she not the epitome of how we, the world in the United States is thinking today? Well, uh, uh, he ain't did nothing. Uh, uh, can't think of anything. Uh, uh, he's not Trump. <laughs> oh, Lord, help us all today. So, um... So uh, today, uh, the poll was taken. It's, it's really getting, it's the, it, his polls are dropping, of course. You know, when I told someone, I said, Trump needs a fire. No, excuse me. He needs to lay off. Excuse me. He needs to give a vacation to all his public relations department. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Paid vacation. Right. You know why? Because the Democrats and the lunacy left. <laughs> they're actually doing all of this PR <laughs> the polls for Donald Trump going through the roof yeah it is remember I told you all long ago the only reason why I started looking at Donald Trump for the same reason a lot of people are I kept figuring out what the hell why are they so down on this man? He wasn't my first choice. What's the deal? Then I got it. Took me a while. I got it. 
He didn't play game, play ball with any of them. <laughs> he wasn't tied into the deep state with any of them. They couldn't manipulate and move him. Yeah, hell yeah, he's a bull in the china shop. Tweets and Twitters and says everything goes off, blah, 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 right? But they couldn't control him. And that was a huge problem. A very big problem. Because mm -hmm. crooks in the Republican Party and crooks in the Democratic Party and crooks in the in-between, it could be controlled. Oh, yeah. Money, money, money. But he couldn't. First of all, the man was already rich. Can I say millionaire rich? I mean, why would he need to think about it? <laughs> why do you want to run for an office? Show ain't for the money. Especially since the first year, no one thought about this. He wouldn't take a salary. Did you know that? I think he took a dollar because he had to take something. He went about the money. And wait a minute. You can't hang with them good old boys up in that. Mm -mm. Not in the house. It's going to always be about the money, baby. So he was not going to be a good team player. Right. You're damn straight. And I'm glad. Because it made it open my eyes, your eyes, and millions of America of what the true deep state really was. It did exist. Crooks going down big time. Big time. Money, 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 money. Mm -hmm. So um, today um, on, my, on my show, I prayed a little bit about, you know, I'm going to pray and keep it in prayer, the, the, uh, the young man who... Somebody, Ricard, whatever, who shot, lined them up. And executed a family. And took off. You know he in Mexico. Yeah, he is. He ain't hiding off here in America. He hiding in Mexico. I'm not saying this is a racial joke. Trust me, his last, he is, a, he is an Hispanic. And he's hiding. Yeah, never to be found again. When those things happen, you know we never find them again. Yeah, our relationship with Mexico, believe me, it is a, it is a, it is a turd's dream. What does a turd do? Floats and it's gone. It is a turd's dream. As I said, mm -hmm. they're not our friends. Everybody that's your neighbor is not your friend. When they, when the cartels lined all those guys up that, that, that kidnapped those, um, uh, Americans and killed two of them and two of them got away out of the four or whatever and they lined the guys up that did it and they got rid of them and put them in jail and execute whatever I, that didn't impress me worth a crap that didn't impress me at all I still have a little bit of brain working first of all they're in control the cartels own everything yes they do in Mexico, please. If you think for one moment you're taking, I'm going to the Picasso de Gallo. I'm going. To, please, please, please. Spin your American dollars some damn where else. Please. Oh, but we're safe in our condo. They own it. Yep, they they run it. Listen. If you say the people are paying them off like the mafia used to do here, you want a little protection? You're right. Protection from what? Me. So that um, let's keep that family up in prayer. I mean, I mean their members. I mean this, and we're so over inundated with so much horror, killings, shootings. Horrid things that we got, la, 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 la. I understand. We're overwhelmed with it. That's why I at, created these, these lens called the Gardis. G-A-R-D-I-S. Gardis, yes. Absolutely. G for guns, A for abortion, R for race, D for drugs, I for immigration, and S for sex, scandals, and schools. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, um, I just uh, really. So let's keep that family uh, that up in prayer. Uh, today I also talked about um, <laughs> the uh, 
I, I'm just, uh, I, uh, the, 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 the so soiree of candidates that are running and going to be running in the Republican thing. I mean, please, that's okay. The Democrats has got their own soiree too. It's going to be a really good, what can I say, wrestling match. I'm still looking at, listening, remembering in the famous words of Cammy Word Salad Harris when she said, I was that little girl you, Joe Biden, voted for with the buses. You didn't want to get the buses in the schools. I was it. You kept me. And then she ended up being a vice president. Ain't said crap since. And ain't did crap since. How? You know, guys, I'm just, I'm going off a little bit here. How? What? No, that's what. What could be in the mind of these crooked politicians to believe that we're so dumb, we're so asinine crazy that we don't see the lying and the cheating? Unbelievable. We have Joe Biden's son. If the information we knew now, we had a new then, he would not have been president. No, he wouldn't have. Uh-uh. No, he wouldn't have, guys. You know it, too. Cracks me up. It's okay to be wrong. It's okay to make a mistake. As a matter of fact, the real adult in the room is the person that says, you know what, that was a dumb thing I did. That was very dumb. No, I'm not going to. No. Admit it. It's okay. We are all in the same frog pot, pot boiling, cooking together. You pay Republicans, you pay the same thing as Democrats for gas. Oh, yeah, you do. Democrats, you pay the same thing in, this, in, in your taxes and stuff as your pot. Yeah, you do. When you're in the store, I see you. I see you looking, turning it over and over again, that package of bacon, chicken. It's just, yeah, what, what is no revelation knowledge here. That's what it is, what it is. So we're always suffering. Come on, Americans. Mr. Rain is pushing for you to wake up and be an American, not Americans. That's what I'm pushing for all the time. So uh, we have, what is it, uh, seven days, five days before Title 41 will end, uh, meaning that you can come over here because of COVID and running for your life and everything. Okay? It's going to end. They're going to have... A woo! Rush to the border. El Paso is already ready. I was expect not just El Paso because all everybody's focusing on El Paso. El, they're coming from where else? We're focused over here. They're coming over here. We're focused over there. Uh huh. Don't get ready. Get ready. So um, the let me see if they'll let me get one other person I'm thinking about. Hold it. Let's see what will happen. Hmm. Put that there. Put this here. B R. Mm hmm. Okay. Let's see if they'll let me. There he is. Okay. Uh huh. Let's see what happens. And then the other was what's his name? His name is. Okay. E. Okay. What is his name? I can't. Gosh. Oh, well. We'll just let him go. Oh, no. Here we go. Back to this. Don't be stupid, oh. Come on. Come on. Hey, Matthew. I'm on. So, um, talked about that today. Um, Justice Alito actually said this. This is Supreme Court Justice said that he really felt that they were in danger. Mm -hmm. Even to the point of saying that they knew that there was a leak and that he has a pretty good idea of who it was. He made reference to the fact of something that it was an assassination plan. Excuse me? Uh, hello? You mean to tell me, Justice, you thought you could actually say there was a possibility of an assassination plan? Huh? And then you have Mayor Garland saying, stand down. 
while they're trying to infiltrate the house of these justices? What? Help me. You know what, what, what amazes me? I know there's crooks on both sides, but you know what the double standards of the of the, of the lunacy left? The lunacy left is, high, is a Democratic Party. It's been high drag. It, it, just, it just amazes me. It, it amazes me. My life, I feel, I'm not feeling safe, says Patrice, uh, whatever, for the Black Lives Matter. I'm not feeling safe. So college students, that, that, that when the professor talks about everything that's not pretending to gay, straight, LGBTQ, I'm not safe. And yet your Supreme Court justice houses are being bombarded, attacked, and and. And the, and, and, and the guy says, what? Stand down. Stand down. There's a scripture that says, you know, a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's exactly what we see right now. So um, if you want me to, a social media manager, we will give you the link. Just text me back or... Message me back. We'll give you the link. Well, Justice Alito, if you just key this in, you know, state said he felt that they weren't safe. And on top of that, he has an idea who did the leak. You know, we can find the guy that did the classified document leaks in less than 72 hours. And we can't find the person that did the leak. I knew then that they knew. They knew. Uh, 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 uh. The person that leaked concerning Roe versus Wade decision with the Supreme Court justice. Unbelievable. So, okay, and, and I talked a little bit about, um, let's see. Um, as I said, yeah, migrant, the guard is G-A-R-D-I-S. I is immigration right now. El Paso, get ready. Brace yourself. They're talking to El Paso while we all were looking over here, looking at this way. They're over here doing, it's, they're coming in other directions. I believe that. If I'm wrong, Beautiful. You know, I don't mind being wrong. I don't have to be right. Ooh, no. Mm -mm. So, um, the other thing, um, I just, uh, before I get to this, because this is very sensitive to my heart. Uh, anyway, so we got a plethora of people running, you know, very elder, all kinds of people. We got someone from India, Pakistan running. I mean, it's going to be a whole bunch of folks running for the GOP, uh, or for the presidential race, whole bunch of people running. It's a pretty good candidates. They really do. They really do. But then, you know, the end of Santa's, you know, there's, it's basically boiling, gonna boil down. We already know. Mm. To um, Trump and DeSantis. It'll boil down to them. There might be a little upsurge with um, uh, Larry Elder, maybe, and a couple of others. On the GOP side, they asked Cammy, was she running? Is she just going to follow the lead? Um, you know, she's too much of a dork to have a, a brain to respond correctly without, you know, seven different companies of salad dressing to go on a word salad. So I don't like the la, 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 la. I just can't even. I mean, I won't even grace my brain with the stupidity. It's just like an insult to my brain to try to figure out what she's trying to say. I, I won't do that. The um, Anyway, so get ready for that, for this whole upcoming uh, pri uh, elections and all of this stuff. They got all kind of people running on both sides, you know. Joey is going to, again, campaign from the basement. He's not going to, he'll do a few appearances, but he won't do a lot. How someone can win the presidency, which he did, campaigning from the basement should say volumes to you, America. Oh, not about him. He's not that suave. They, they just knew you were, that you were just the naught. They knew they could, and they did. For you to even allow them to think they can do that again. Jesus of Nazareth. Just my brain. They think they can do it again. Come on, America. You're smarter than this. 
hell to the no 17 times. You're smarter than this. Mm -mm. No. Come on. So, so pull out the butter popcorn. It's going to be a lot. It's going to be unbelievable. Those who are going to be uh, in, in, involved with, um, you know, running for office. They need to be running from office, but they're running for office again and again. Um, <laughs> I, um, I had this statement said to me, uh, uh, not to me, to others. It was in an audience, and um, it was Ted Cruz in this particular audience, and he said, you know what's wrong with the Republican Party? When it's great, not wrong, he says, one of the greatest things I see with the Republican Party is apathy. Mm -hmm. Apathy. And then on another occasion, Ted Cruz said it. They weren't even together on the same platform. Two different days, two different events. He said apathy. I think that apathy is on both sides. I think apathy is running uh, because of uh, all the lunacy left. The Democratic Party has been able to join, uh, take, uh, what can I say, corporations and the digital and all this and bring it together. Uh-huh. That's how they have the power. Absolutely. Absolutely. Government get in bed with high, uh, governments uh, and high tech comp corporations get in bed with big tech and big tech get in bed with uh, 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 politics. And then we have these illegitimate kids running around here crazy. We don't know what the hell to do. It's too late because they're already out. They're already out the bag. Yeah, they are. And so, and, they, and they're hoping to do the same damn thing again. It just amazes me. It amazes me. You know, as I told you guys, my little background in history, lived in the inner city of Detroit, you know, walked in all my life when I became old, old enough to vote, so proud of myself. I walked in and voted for a decade or two for, as a Democrat and walked out and lived like a Republican. What the hell was that? I guarantee if you made a list, just try it. I wish somebody would do it. I really don't have the time to do it at this point in my life. If you just took a list, and you made a list and you said, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, ten things. Do you want your own house? Do you want to own your own house? Do you want to own your automobile? Do you want to pay your bills? Do you want to have medical, take care of your medical care from your job? Do you want insurance? Do you want to invest? Do you want your kids to go to school? Do you want? I get, and don't put anybody's name on nothing. Hand that blank form out. I guarantee you they go check, 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 check. Democrats, gay, straight, LGBT, UT, EFG, HYJK, all of y'all will be checking yes. And then when greatest someone go flip that say, oops, you just voted Republican or you just voted conservative. They'd be shocked. Then maybe not shocked. Pride, pride, pride is a killer. I guarantee you, we want the same things. Yeah, we do. I bet you we want 80, 70, 80% of the same things. But the PPPs, you know, the crooked pimps, politicians, and preachers. Yeah. They continue to divide us, keep us at each other. On and on. I hate the black people. I hate the white people. I hate the gays. I hate the strays. I hate the Democrats. I hate the Republicans. And boom, yeah. And they're just sitting back, picking their teeth, eating those six inch steaks at your expense, America. At your expense. Damn shame. I'm tired. I am. I've been here for a while, guys. I've seen some things. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And I think it's high time we begin to do that collective no to all these crooked politicians say hell to the no 17, well, 25 times. I'm moving the number up. No! We want to, you know, I, I, I'm just, I can't tell you this feeling of, um, of death when I walk into, um, Stores today, like Office Max, you know, um, <laughs> and um, <laughs> when I walk in there and um, I see 
maybe three employees in an office max. Running crazy, trying to stock, trying to cash, trying to run the print shop area, the reproduction area, trying to answer questions about computers being sold, trying to stock, trying to do the printing, trying to answer questions, trying to cash out. Three or four people in one big, huge office man. Hey, hey, you see it. You see what I see, don't you? Come on. Yeah, you see it. Nobody said anything. Nobody says says anything, though. Not say, it's saying anything. When you walk in Walmart, you see it, don't you? Isn't that a funny feeling? There's no registers. Yeah. One or two with one hand open. Maybe one or two, 20, 16, 15, 20 registered. Maybe four open. The rest is scanned through. You're right. Mm -hmm. You see. I see it too. Don't you tired of that? Are you going to tell me that you're so stuck on a party that you're going to do the stupid and, um, and, um, Possibly vote for the same idiots again that did this to us? Huh? You think it's going to be better? Hell no. Come on. Come on, guys. Talk to your friends. Cross the aisle. Have the conversation to the black, pink, polka dot, stripe, yellow, white, in between, gay, straight, LG. Have the conversation. We cannot do the same stupid again. We won't survive. When we get, who we get in office this next term, guys, this is it. It would be a hell of a long time before we ever bring our nose up above water again. You know what? I, I got a new name. You know, I always making up names and acronyms. I call it the widow class. No, not the W-I-D-O-W, -W, like a woman or a husband who has lost their spouse. No, the widow, W-I-D-D-L-E. You know how you take a, a stick or something and you whittle it down. Oh, he just whittling. That's what they're doing to the American. Thank you, Matthew. What they're doing to the American public today. Jobs. Health care. More welfare, more money, trillion dollars debt, and you know what they're doing? And so then when they're whittling down, whittling down, when they're whittling you down, what are they whittling you down to? They're removing the middle class. Who is the they? Again, the they is the lunacy left, and those who, are, who have adopted the Marxist, Communist, Socialist Party type tactics where there's only the elite and the poor. Again, the only the elite, the top, and the poor. And the others. We're the others. No, they won't call us the poor. We'll be the others. That's exactly what happened. Uh, I thank God that he gives me these, these names and these ideas because it helps me to be able to help people to see clearly now. So I call it the widow class. You know, when you're whittling wood, not the widow, not the W-I-D-O-W, -W, the W-I-D-D-L-E, whittling down. Getting rid of the middle class. Widow class making us widows. You, it will be the rich, and then it's going to essence is about it's going to be the boom. Bottom line, it'll be the poor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And all those that are running around trying to protect these ideologies that it's okay when you're standing in the line next to Miss Lorraine. And you and you 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 your grocery bill. You know what you're paying. You know what that steak what used to cost. You know what that dozen of eggs a dozen of eggs five and six dollars. Damn. You know better, Americans. You know you know better. Stop protecting parties. Vote policies. Who is representing the policies to keep us free as Americans? That's who you vote for. Well, I don't like the way he uh, his tie is. And I don't care about his... Uh, I don't give a crap, hallelujah. 
I wouldn't care if he came in with a banana stuck out of his nose and a red bandana around every one of his fingers. Hello? Right now, we're on the precipice of a very, very defining hour. This, as Winston Churchill said, is our defining hour. It is. We don't, we don't have the time. Well, let's just try so-and-so. He looks like he's a nice guy. We don't have that kind of time, Maybelline. We don't have that time, KK. We don't have it, Megan. We don't have that kind of time. Sorry, I'm getting a little bit of what the radio show is normally like. We don't. Think about it. You're on the operating table. You got to have a major organ transplant or removed. Team of doctors have been huddling up. They come to you with their prognosis and what they're going to do. They tell you, we know about this gentleman who's been doing it forever and forever. We know about this gentleman who's been doing it for a long time, but only on certain people. We tell you, this new, we got a new guy in town. Exactly. And he's going to try some new things. We're going to give him a trial. What would you pick? I asked you, what would you pick? The guy who's been doing it for a very, very long time and successful at it. Mm. But his, you know, you really don't like the way he looks and the way he carries himself. The guy who has been doing it not for a really long time, but he's been known to be a good guy. The guy who's going to try something new because he's never done it before, but he has good intentions. Who would you choose, America? I've already answered that question for you. You already know who you would choose. You have a short amount of time. You can't afford a mistake or I thought. You cannot afford it. I need not say more on who that represents. I think you already know whether you like him or not. So I had um in the guard is G A R D I S. Keep the gargles on. So guns issued the, the man that came in and just assault rifles shot down. So family. Uh, I heard a family, a family relative say to me, well, you know, it's a mental issue. When people beat up their wives, do things and kill people, it's now mental. Everything is mental. Everything is under the category of mental. So if everything is mental and then everybody's crazy, then everything's excused. Do you understand where I'm going with that? It's almost like when they said everybody's a racist, everything is racist. If everything is racist and nothing is at that point, then what? what? Hmm. Right. You go to Glenn Beck's uh, website. I think he has something on the DAs that run the different towns, uh, cities. I think there's about 40 or maybe 30, I'm not sure, uh, or 20 major cities that are run by Soros DAs. That means they're being paid to catch and release. No, don't hold them. Don't mean anything. Just let them go. Man who uh, is in a park and he is uh, performing uh, an act upon himself, sexual act upon himself, while he's jogging behind women and then turns out he had four or five other cases on him about doing something like that. And then yet every time they release him. Let me tell you something about that seductive and that, that, that uh, is, is, is insidious mind. He won't stop there until he actually carries out an act upon a woman. Then, of course, then what? It's a damn shame. It would behoove you to look at the cities who have the Soros mayors, DAs, I'm sorry, DAs that are being paid. It would behoove for you to look at that. Look at the crime. Boom, 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 boom. Yeah, mm hmm Catch and release. The only thing they need to be catching and release is fish. And right now, we ain't releasing no damn fish because we getting kind of poor up in here. We're going to need that food. Catch that fish. You better freeze it, cut it, and right. I'm just saying. I want to get to a topic that's 
under the guard is it's it's not guns it's not abortion it's not a drugs it's not immigration and um it's not sex and it's not scandals but it fits in there under the s is it's a social castration hold on don't leave don't cut off yet please it's not going to get vulgar I am very, can I say, sensitive right now, very heightened awareness of what I see happening to the male species in the United States of America, yea, even the world. There is a consistent, diabolical onslaught plan to take the male species, not just lower him and make him equal with the females, but really to put him under. Prove me wrong. Yeah. At first I noticed it in a marketing and the theater person like I am and stage and all this stuff, I noticed it in commercials that the men were the dorks. Oh, what a great, this is a clothespin. We can use it this way. Honey, that is not to clean your ears with. Sweetheart, it's actually to do so and so. The female comes along and rescues. Look at the commercials. You think I'm wrong? Mm -hmm. And all in the name of diversity, you gotta have a black person and everything. You gotta have a woman in the forefront. I got them. There's a poor little guy, the dork in the back. He had the male species. I call it the social castration of the male. I remember what that looked like because being a person that is black, I remember as a little girl noticing that whenever there was a black person on TV, oh my God, color, color, color. Oh, the family members from all over the house, everywhere in the neighborhood running, look at the TV, a black person on TV. Yeah, we'd all call each other like ding, 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 ding. Hey. It didn't dawn on me that when I saw them, they were either mopping the floors, they were cleaning something, yes, a boss, and then they were in those subservient roles that our society had casted them. <laughs> Sidebar here. Don't you think for one moment that I'm one of those people that are all into reparations and trying to raise a flag about slavery? Slavery is a ship that has sailed long ago, and I'm not on it. I'm an American. I'm glad that my forefathers, I hate to say this, don't get mad at me, black people, but I know ain't no black people watching me because you're too afraid to admit the truth. Uh, uh, slavery, I'm glad that my uh, chieftain captains who sold my great, 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 whatever, tribal people to the white people, sold them, because that's how they got here, you know, sold them, because that way, Eyes made that to America. Hell yes. I've been to 17 countries. I live in no other. You couldn't pay me to live in any other country. No. So what I've been seeing, and I know what I'm saying, guys. I just, Mr. Lorraine, been, been around for a while. There's this so sh slow yeah, reduction of the male species first from here Bring it down, you know, the whole masculinity thing, the whole, what is it, masochism, and he's so this and so, bringing it down, that's right. And then they put it from equal to under, and then lower, yeah. Yeah. So today, we're all about to close in my office. Two young men came through the hallways, and they had these t-shirts on and this big box of stuff that they were they were uh, selling and so these um, these two young men came in and we have a sign outside of our I moved my office I'm no longer where we were and outside it says no soliciting I have an office suite now believe it or not sweet and um, it says no soliciting 
when I saw the young men, um, I knew right away who they represented. I could see by the little card on their shirts and then the, you know, what they were about to offer you to make a donation or whatever. And when they came in, I said, uh, uh, guys, we don't have soliciting in this building. But my heart in that moment just stopped and I could see this is that generation. The Bible speaks about a generation, it really does, that has not been born yet, but they will come along to do great exploits. I think now why there's such a social castration of the American male. I mean in every facet of society. Take down the man, take down the male. Listen, Mr. Rain, I'm a damn confident woman. I don't have to do everything a man does just because a man does it. Oh, no. I do what I do because God has set me up to do it. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. I still want a man to pay for my bill, my lunch, take me out, open the damn door, and hot right, put on his coat. I can walk over a puddle. I am so still there. Yeah. Yeah, God didn't make a mistake when he made me in this physical being as a female species. And he damn sure didn't make a mistake when he made the man first in his male physical being as a male. Right. So I've been really heightened. My awareness, my antennas are up. I see it in the commercials. The man is the door. He's in the back. He doesn't know how to do anything. I've been singing on, on, on billboards. I've been seeing not only advertisement. I've been singing the way that, you know, I, 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 I first started singing, to be honest with you, 20 years ago when I saw that there are no males running the schools hard anymore. 90% of the teachers and principals and everything are females. What does that do to the ends of the sight of a child? Here, go to the principal, there's a woman. Go to your counselor, there's a woman. Go to your teacher, there's a woman. Ding, 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 ding. So if I was a male species, and growing, not to mention the whole transgender issue of, you know, five or six different sexes, whatever, why, you know, this, please, please, please. So if I was a young man today, and especially a white young male, oh, yes. Hear Miss Lorraine. Please hear Miss Lorraine. Please hear Miss Lorraine. You don't live in an inner city of Detroit all your life and then live in a 982 people town in the country area. You don't do that unless you don't have racial issues. Okay? Okay. So hear Miss Lorraine. Take off the glasses here. When I look at the average young white male today, you know what I keep seeing in their eyes? Eyes is the windows of the soul. Speaks of your mind, your will, and your emotions. I see it when I look at people. You know what I keep hearing? Thanks, Matthew. I keep hearing, help me. Where do I fit? I'm not gay. I'm not black. I'm not female. Where do I fit? Listen, if you have young men in your sphere of influence, I don't care what race they are, you better begin to strengthen them. You better begin to procure them. You better to begin to make them stand on a solid foundation of purpose and calling. Hear me. When those two young men between the ages of, what can I say, 20, 25 years old, walked in my office, walked in the hallways today, I could have easily said, you know, there's no soliciting here. You need to leave. You know what I did? I told them, come in my office. And I closed the door. And I looked them straight in the face. And I told them, I know who you are. God has set you up for such a time as this. The why the enemy is coming in after you like a flood is because you're the ones that God is going to use. Don't you dare think for one moment that you're not born with a purpose. This is your time. You're that generation for the job. There's a scripture that says there's a generation that has not been born yet. In the Bible, it said that you guys were coming and you are that generation. When you see young men, listen to me. I'm talking to you Americans and everybody listen to me. I see it in their eyes. The suicide rate of young men is... You speak girls, remember? 
been neck and neck. No. Yeah, it is. People's grandchildren between 16 and 20 committing suicide. Guys, listen to Miss Lorraine. You have to ask yourself why. Why? The enemy is only after those things that God is going to use. Remember, if you're sitting in this mind in your own business, in your brisket, and you ain't going to affect nobody, you probably might live a long time because he wants you to sit there and do absolutely, positively nothing. But God has a plan for the young men in this earth to raise this nation up and flip that script. Mm -hmm. So I pray for them. I laid hands on them. I spoke to them. I prophesied to them. I gave them a word. I encouraged them. Yes, I do. And they left out of there. <laughs> I'm trusting and open that not only did they were on cloud nine, but they were listening and knowing that they were here for a purpose. They needed that encouragement. I'm going to get ready to close. I'm going to talk to you all who are possibly, you know, your local areas to vote. You may not live in my area, but you live somewhere. <laughs> this is that time you vote for your city councils and your school boards. You do. Most of us will never get on a bus, car, or train, plane, and go to Washington. Good for you. Good for you. That's not where the changes are made. It's who you put in them seats that makes a difference. The word of God speaks about your Judea, your Samaria, and then your outermost parts. Your Judea, your Samaria, your outermost parts. Your Judea is your little town, your little city that you live in. Your Samaria is your, is, is your neighboring areas outside of that, your county. And your outermost part goes into your state. Can we put those goggles on for a minute? Let me see if I can give you just a little bit of your Judea, your little town, your Samaria, your county and surrounding little towns, and then your outermost part, your state. The word of God commends for us to go to our Judea, our Samaria, and our outermost part. And then to do what? To do what? To speak truth to power. Yes, you should. And one of the great ways, everybody ain't crazy like Miss Lorraine, get up in the streets and holler and scream. I got that. Good for you. We don't need a bunch of Lorraines around. Please, Jesus, help us all. But we do have Americans, not Americans. We're Americans. Get your butt up and go vote. I don't know all I'm crooks. I don't talk to people like that. Well, I ain't going to vote. Stop it. Because when whatever goes down in your little town and your little community and your little county, it's going to affect you. Get your butt up and go vote. If you live in the Kerrville, Kerr County area, go vote. Your city council for Kerrville right now is going down big time. I know some of us don't. We live in other areas. That's not a Kerrville. Get up. Encourage your Kerrville friends. Go vote. I got this thing. Vote. Meet me on the boat. Let's have a beer and a burger. How about that? How about that? On the 5th. That Friday. 6 is our early voting is before it, going on now. Go vote. Now here we go. Remember when I asked you about. Who to vote for? Well, right, I get calls the day of, really, believe it or not. Right, I'm on the way to vote. Who do I vote for? First, I thought that was, oh, they think well of me. I'm kind of not liking it. I'm kind of not liking it. Damn it, do your homework. Do your homework. Here we go. We recognize that most people that vote, bipartisan or whatever, our liars, uh, don't get mad at me, but they do, yeah. Because they want to flip on you when they get in office. That's what they, they don't want to take a side. Listen, if you can't take a side, then you ain't going to take a side now. You damn sure ain't going to take a side later. You know what I'm saying? At least not my side. You either are a Democrat or you either are a Republican. That's true. Now, take and break that down. That's not a party thing. 
Look at the policies. So I listed some questions. I went to the candidate forum and I had some really interesting questions. I sent them out to other people. And they, oh, they said, my, there's some good questions. Number one, for what, based on the things that you say that you're going to do and your plan, what programs, organizations, or affiliates have you been hanging out with that represent those values? Get it? You ain't gonna tell me you're gonna you're gonna feed the hungry, save the poor, and you living out with eating six inch steak steaks and, and hanging out with the big boys somewhere in a rich area, and you ain't you don't belong to none of the organizations that help poor people. You don't even belong to them. You can't tell me you're a conservative. And then all the people you hang out with is totally opposite. You can't tell me that. I asked him that question. If you were given a million dollar grant for your position to handle in that city, what would be the first thing you would do? Oh, well, I, I would make sure the city's safe. You know, I talked to, uh, and I'm naming, I, I'm going to name names. I talked to, was it uh, Guerrero? And I went to the, the, um, what was it, the uh, candidate forum and, and the Stevens and then I, there was uh, Brandon Aries and, and what I call not your average white girl, Susan Ferguson. And then, of course, a Roman Garcia New Blood, that young boy blood I've been talking to y'all about. The one that they try to push down. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the people that were running against him. They couldn't even answer the questions properly. Start, oh, well, I want the city to be safe. Well, damn, you want it to be safe. How about take care of the people in the city? How about do that first? Thank you, Matthew. How about all the crap that's been going on? you just going to get in there and run the wheel the way it's been going down the wrong way? you just going to keep going down the wrong way? What are you going to do different? We need some young blood. We need some Roman Garcia up in there. Yeah, we do. We need some, some, what I call your Nyag, not your average white girl, which is uh, 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 Miss Ferguson, Barbara Ferguson. We need somebody like her. That's right. Listen, look at her platform. Look at what she believes in, what she's trying to do. Putting it back in the hands of the people. Making sitting down and find out what do the people want to do. How do we want to reach this goal? If we do get the money, this is what we're going to do. But that will work with you. Get the people involved with the planning. And we damn show me some Brandon Aries. Damn show. If you don't live in the Cur our Curville area, I know it don't apply to you. But I'm just telling you, we do. You know people that live in Curville, tell them what I just said. Tag my videos to send it to them. On Fridays, 5 a.m. in the morning, 5.55 rather, a.m. in the morning, 5 minutes to 6, I do a thing called 555 Rise, pray I just go in for about 30 minutes, five to 10 minutes each of these topics. What? Boom. The first one is faith. The second one, boom, is family. The next one is finances. The next one I, is freedom for our country. And the next one may not be in that order, but the last one generally has a lot to do with fathers. We're the men. Until we can make America, make men great again, we can't make America great again. That's the damn truth. Everybody get used to it. Feminists, you might as well forget it. We got one of the largest feminist groups to join the GOP party. What? Yes. Because even now they realize, I'm going to practice little Megan. I'm going to work her out and make sure she swims well. She runs track well. You going to put a hairy ass man in the same stall with her? I don't think so. Get up. If you don't even live in the Cur County, it's Kirkville area, you still, you encourage those that do to go vote. And when your time comes to go vote, if you're in, the, in that area of whatever city you live in, get your butt up and go vote. All right, all right, I'm going to close off. I'm not going to go the whole thing who's voting for Trump and all of that crap, hallelujah. They're going to be dividing you enough on that as it is. They already got you down. They got you arguing already with one another. No, Trump is like you. Uh-uh, we don't want him. He got too much baggage. Well, DeSantis, well, I don't trust him on the world page. What is he doing on the world front? He doesn't know anything about the world. And okay, 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 okay.
You're doing exactly what they expected for you to do. Yeah, they do. They expected for you to argue and fall apart. And that's kind of what we're doing. Keep us what I call the oversaturation of the vitamin D. Deceive, delude, uh, divide, ultimately to destroy. Deceive, delude, to divide, ultimately to destroy. Oversaturation of the vitamin D. Let me see if I can find Tucker's words. Here they are over here. Yes. I'm not a Fox News advocate. No, I mean, they're all right. Okay. So all, you know, news media, I, I, I give myself about six hours a month. A little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit here. Uh-uh, uh-uh, I don't say no. I don't, I don't, uh-uh. Uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. I got a new one I'm looking at called Town Hall. It seemed to like, I, I kind of like it. So I'm looking at that. But other than that, of course, you know, the big issue with they, they, um, uh, what, um, Fire Tucker Hall, Tucker, 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 uh, Tucker Carlson, everybody all, oh my God, oh my God, hold on, Mabel, hold your britches, it's going to be a good thing, Rupert Murdoch, which is the basic big contributor owner of Fox News, he's not a real lover, of the Republican Party anyway. So hold on. He's been wanting Tucker gone for a long time. This I've never seen a major corporation go through a lawsuit and heads don't roll. Usually from the top, someone goes. I was wondering who was it going to be. I didn't hear anything. I said, oh, oh, they just wanted the money. They got the money. Oh, hold on, hold on. Booyah! Within 48 hours, boom, Tucker. And then, of course, CNN, Don Lemon. With the, farewell to that. You know, I mean, what, you know, what was Don Lemon doing anyway? Just being black. Being black, and because he's black, uh, you can show up and be black and do anything stupid. It doesn't matter. You're in. You know, I, I don't want a job like that. Never call me to the table because I'm black. Please. It's an insult to me. I'm not an African-American. I'm an American. I have to keep reminding people of that. But Tucker said this. He finally opened up and he said this. And I'm going to close with this. He said, when honest people... Say what is true, calmly and without abrasiveness. I mean, I have the word abrasive right where he had, but he says they become powerful. And the liars shrink. Think about that. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this evening. I ask you to bless my sisters and brothers watching. God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you give us this opportunity to be able to share what I believe is truth. And if it's not, God, correct me. I'm open to the change. Lord, I ask you to bless this nation. I lift up the family who's shot and murdered. And the, today, Lord God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus for those over in Ukraine that are our, bro our, our kids over there fighting or being involved with something, Lord God, we have no business God being a part of. Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus that you heal this nation, remove wickedness out of its place, replace it with righteousness. In Christ's name, amen and amen. Listen, God bless you. Keep you, make his face shine upon you, give you mercy and grace and peace. Have a good night, nightcap at nine, and I'll see you tomorrow on the Patriot. Good morning, Hill Country. This is your authentic, certified neighborhood colored girl. Good night, everybody.